So the very worst thing that you could do to promote discord is to tell a person that they shouldn't feel a certain way or that they don't mean what they're saying. These two sayings are a gross violation of the dignity and respect that is due to the other person. And you have in this act by saying this, you've rejected the human reality of the other person. So this, our study that we're going to do today is from the Christ letters. And we're going to talk about um, conflict and how to get through it. You know, you can ask the other person, if somebody says something to you, you can ask them, you can say, you know, do you really mean what you're saying? And if the answer is yes, then it must be accepted. And the discussion should continue on from that point. So you know that we all have different perspectives of things. And there was this study that was done, we've probably talked about this before, but there was a car crash that was observed by something like, I don't know, like 100 people, something huge like this. This was a study. And so they then interviewed the people afterwards to ask them how they viewed the car crash. Here's the deal. Every person said something different. Oh, the car was going real fast. Oh, the car was going real slow. Oh, the, this was going, depending on that person, what they were going through in their life, where they were, all the stuff, all the things, every person had a different perspective of what was going on. So very often we could get in a conflict with somebody. And if our ego is in the way, then we won't even be open to listening to what the other person has to say. Cause it's like, Oh, well, this wasn't my intent. So if you feel that way, you're wrong. Well, no, no, indeed. If they feel that way, they feel that way. They're right. And we can discuss this and how they feel. So we are all ego based and everyone subconsciously, um, believes their top dog or they're at least equal to other people. So when you're in a conflict with someone, well, people don't want to be wrong, right? Nobody wants to be wrong, but here's the thing we're people. So we can't be right all the time. It's just not possible. So when we have something come up and we say, you know, Oh, Hey, this thing happened, you know, I feel this way. And, and somebody says, no, you don't, you don't feel that way. This didn't happen. What is happening here is there's a, a violation of that person's consciousness, essentially. And this person was more than likely bringing this issue up because it was causing them emotional harm, right? It was causing their mind to have a problem with what was just said or what was done or whatever this happens to be. And so by invalidating that person and saying, no, you don't feel that way. Um, not only have you not accomplished anything, not only will nothing be accomplished, but this will build up resentments eventually, right? Because that other person is not feeling understood. They're not feeling listened to. They're not feeling heard. And if that person feels like, you know, I could say these things, but it's not going to be received. Eventually they're going to stop saying the things and then resentments really going to build up. I know, you know, in a, um, previous relationships, um, that I actually had to write a letter. I would have to write letters because I was interrupted. I could never get my, I could never even get out what I was trying to say because I would be interrupted and told I was wrong or that didn't ha or, you know, it was our, I, how I was feeling was invalidated every time. So I would just write out a letter because I knew, okay, well, I can say how it is that I'm feeling without getting interrupted. And this person will have to, you know, read it. Um, so a good way, let, let's say that there is some kind of conflict that's going on here. You will know that when somebody says something to you and you don't agree with it, right? It's like, oh, you know, I didn't intend this. You know, if somebody's saying, oh, you know, you did this and I feel this way, but you didn't intend it. It is so easy to interrupt that person and be like, what? No, I didn't, you know, whatever. And then you take over the conversation and you're trying to defend yourself. But what is happening when you're doing this is that the other person is now not feeling heard. They're not feeling understood. 
Um, and you have taken this thing that they have said to you and you've essentially stomped on it and told it it's a piece of crap and that it doesn't matter and go away. You know, why'd you think this? That's stupid. Don't think it. And so when we have an issue that comes up, we can say what it is that we want to say. And if we can work with our partner, if you have a partner that is agreeable, or I'm not saying that this is just relationships, this is any conflict, any person that you're dealing with, if there's conflict, if you can actually be open to listening to that person and shutting your mouth for five minutes, 10 minutes, will you listen to that person explain? Now, I know that you probably feel the same way that I do, that if you're talking and someone interrupts you, you know, and it's not just like, oh, you know, oh, cool. Oh yes, this, you know, but it, but if it's an actual interruption and you don't get to finish your statement, it causes you to feel a certain way, right? You don't like it. So it is very beneficial when you're in a conflict, if you can do the courtesy to the other person of fully hearing them out, letting them speak a full five minutes, you can agree upon this, you know, Hey, this is the issue. I feel like this might get heated. I'm going to give you five full minutes. I'm even going to set a timer. So you've got that whole five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, maybe they need more time, whatever it is that they need to say. And so that they can fully get it out. This is what happened. This is how it makes me feel. Now I'm feeling this way. This is what I'm thinking. Okay. Well, if you truly care to resolve this conflict, then you can sit there in silence. You can listen to that person and then you can understand. And the best way to do this is to step into their shoes and put yourself in their shoes because maybe you did say something, maybe you did do something that you were completely unaware that you did, or that was taken in a certain way because there was a previous bias that was there. So the reason why, you know, long-term friendships and uh, marriages and relationships and things like this end is because we are not giving the other person the courtesy of truly stepping into their shoes and understanding where they're coming from. When someone comes to you with a problem and they say, Hey, you know, I don't like this. And you just ignore them. You're like, Oh, good for you. This is going to build up internal resentments, right? But if somebody comes to you and they say, Hey, I don't like this. And you acknowledge what it is that they're saying and you put yourself in them shoe in their shoes and be like, Oh yes. You know what? I guess if I was in their shoes too, that probably would have come across this way. It probably would make me feel this way too. And then you can develop compassion and understanding. And you can look at this as rather an attack because that's what people, you know, anytime that someone comes to you with conflict, it's like, oh, they feel attacked, right? Something has been done wrong. I'm being attacked. I need to defend myself when you don't have to defend yourself. And when you can look at this as a chance for growth, like, okay, this person is saying I did this and this hurt them. Okay. Well, when you can look at this compassionately, then you can see things inside yourself that maybe you can work on. Like, oh, that did come across that way. Oh, you know what? I think I've maybe done this to other people. I didn't even realize that it was coming across this way. Right. And you could have a moment of personal growth or you could have a moment of I'm being attacked and I'm going to not let this person, um, get what they're saying. I'm going to invalidate them. And then we're going to walk forward in our life with internal resentments that don't get resolved. And eventually we're going to hate each other and never speak to each other again. You know, those are your options. So when we can actually listen to the other person and their complaints and what it is that they need, then we can truly help these people. So people really use their minds recklessly. They will blight their lives and the lives of other people with their thoughts and their words. And all these thoughts and all these words are just a rising from their ego drive because it's only your thought life and emotional upheavals, which end in quarrels and mayhem. Let me say that again. 
It's only your thought life. Only. And the words that are arising from your ego. It's only your thought and emotional upheavals which end in quarrels and mayhem. It's not your faces or your bodies or your legs unless the quarrel ends in physical abuse. Uh, but even bodily conflict has its origins of frustration within the ego, within the mind and the emotions, and it's conveyed to the limbs to vent the uncontrollable wrath. All begins in mind, which means all can be healed in mind. And here's the deal. When we have these emotional upheavals and this mayhem that we hold within us, what is going to happen? Eventually it will manifest physically in our bodies and we will physically have a depletion or a breakdown of our bodies. It will end in disease. It will end um, in ailments, but it will be manifested in our body. But here's the deal. Here's the best thing is that when you resolve the things that are attached to that, then you're ailments go away your diseases go away you have now healed yourself what a wonderful thing this is so when we're not reckless with our words and with our actions and then someone comes to us and they have um, a conflict and they say oh hey this is going on being understanding and compassionate and listening um, is the best way to do this so so many families have unresolved um, fights and animosities towards each other and this is all because of a lack of communication you know people don't want to say you know this is how i'm feeling they don't want to say it so they hold it internally and it damages and it hurts them i remember someone um back in the day being quite resentful towards their father saying you know you're never here you 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 use me the only time that you call me is when you need me for this and you you don't attend that and you don't want to do all these things and and, and telling me telling me about this and i'm like well what good is telling me doing this none none at all no no good i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell your dad i'm not gonna I can, there's nothing i can do about it how will you feel if you go to this person and you say what you need to say oh well you know, what if they, you know, take it this way or take it that way? I'm like, well, no, but you're going to present this in a way of only I feel statements. You know, I feel this way, not you did this, but I've been feeling, you know, neglected. I've been feeling like, you know, we live so close, but, you know, there hasn't really been any efforts made to, you know, whatever. And so we kind of like pre-discuss, you know, a good channel. And so then... This person is like, well, you know, I don't know how they're going to react to it. And I'm like, but this doesn't matter. How are you going to feel when you're no longer holding that internal resentment in you and you've now said it? Okay, you'll feel good. Perfect, Kate. So let's do this. So then they go and they tell this person. And this person was completely in their ego. And it was not well received. There was no resolution to it. And so my you know friend calls afterwards and i was like oh well how did it go you know for long later well you know i feel better so i guess that's what matters okay well how was it received yeah it wasn't you know didn't see it didn't didn't really care didn't really whatever i was like okay but you feel better oh yeah i feel way better perfect because this is what matters right so if someone wants to respond to you in an ego-based way but you need to say something you need to say it but as long as you're saying this lovingly and compassionately of i'm coming here because i want to resolve this issue i don't want to feel this way anymore then you're doing the right thing you know but if you go into it and be like you haven't been calling me and you haven't been doing this and you haven't been, well you're going to be met back with that exact same energy that you went in there and so that's the result that you're going to get is the same energy that you're putting out so if you have a conflict with somebody going to this person only i feel statements and not like you did this and now i feel no i feel this way and just specifically keep it to the i feel statements and then if this person cannot communicate if they're not mature enough if they are so in their ego that they can't even listen to you then you, you're gonna have to deal with that then but here's the deal if you come to this person and you have 
and you're presenting this issue and they don't accept it, you can now let them go. You can let them go. You don't need to keep people in your life that are going to constantly be harming and hurting you, especially if they're not even going to communicate with you and they're not going to respect you enough to listen to how you're feeling and what you need to say. Because I know for my friends, if, if I had a friend come to me and say, Hey, I've been feeling this way. 1 million percent. I'm going to listen to every single word that they have to say. And if I had something to do with it, I'm going to seriously contemplate it and going to come up with some type of solution or resolution to the issue. Now, when wouldn't I do that? If I don't actually care about the other person. So if this is the result that you get on the other end of your, I feel statements, then you can know that this person is in their ego, that they don't care and you can let them go and you can make room for people who do care. So it's very beneficial having that time frame and agreeing upon it of, okay, this looks like this is going to be quite an issue. Can we set the timer five minutes? I want to hear everything that you have to say. I want this to be resolved. Perfect. You're going to need 10 minutes. Excellent. I'll give you 10 minutes. I'm not going to say a word. And if they're finished at eight minutes, you can sit there in two minutes of silence and really understand and compassionately put yourself in that person's shoes before you respond. It is better to take some time of silence and contemplation before you just immediately spout back whatever it is that you have to say, right? Because when you do that, you're not actually listening. You're not actually absorbing the other person's statement, but when you can sit there and truly contemplate, put yourself in their shoes, try to feel how they're feeling, then you can compassionately and warmly respond back to them. And then you will have some type of resolution. But going back to that statement before when, you know, I told my friend, you know, you, if you, are you going to feel better if you say this, if you, whatever, if you, if you end up with someone who is so in their ego that they cannot and will not understand you, that they cannot, and they will not listen to you. Then the only thing that you can do is concede defeat, laugh and walk away and hold no harsh feelings. And just know that that person is absolutely in their ego drive. They are blind. They have ego blindness. They cannot see it and that that's okay. And then you can just imagine both of yourselves in heavenly divine light and just walk away and leave the conflict and perhaps let the person go. Perhaps not. It really depends on the situation. But when we aren't listening to the grievances of other people, when they're about us, and I'm only talking about that because listening to somebody sit there and gripe about somebody else is a nightmare, right? You know it, unless you're part of it, ugh, gross. It's addicting. And, um, it's just, so I can't even, can't even anymore. Um, but if you're in those low states, um, of conflict and ego, and you like fighting with people and you like blaming people and you like criticizing and you like complaining, it's going to be difficult. Um, you need to heal that within yourself. When we resolve conflicts, um, what we're really doing is understanding the other person's consciousness. That's all we're doing. And we don't typically understand other people's consciousness, right? You're sitting next to somebody, they're quiet on the couch. They're still thinking something, right? They still have consciousness going on. Our consciousness does not stop. And so sometimes people can go down into rabbit holes and their minds can drive them crazy and they can be thinking all kinds of things that are dragging them down all kinds of things. We don't know what is in other people's consciousness unless they tell us and they're truthful about it. Otherwise we're just kind of guessing. So if somebody ever comes to you and says, Hey, you know, I feel hurt. I feel harmed or, you know, this happened and I feel this way and blah, blah, blah. Just accept fully what it is that they have said to you, put yourself compassionately in their shoes, give them time to get their full statements out. 
and then compassionately and warmly respond back to them. And as you do this, you will have won the battle over your ego because if somebody's sitting there and they're attacking you and you can just sit there and you can calmly listen and you can truly take it in and truly compassionately understand where this person is coming from, you can not only gain from that because maybe they're saying something that you could change about yourself. So thank you for the awareness of this. Now I can be a better person. Um, and you've won the battle over your ego by just accepting and listening and understanding and you will learn something from this by being compassionate towards others and what they're experiencing in their own consciousness in their own world because your own consciousness that's it that's all that's what you're living in that is your world is your mind it's your world so we want it to be a happy place so that's all I got for you guys here today uh, resolving conflict. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.